Hello, kinder scientists. Miss Hutchinson here again in my backyard, ready for more science lab. Now today we're gonna to be going into the garden and looking at some small creatures we find there. Bugs, great job. Before we dive into the world of bugs, I wanted to talk about the seeds we planted a while ago. We were getting them ready to do two experiments, one about water and one about sunlight. Now, unfortunately, our beans just didn't quite make it. They did sprout and I was ready for them to grow big and tall so we could do our experiment. And then they just stopped growing. I'm not really sure what happened, um, but I wanted to kind of show you what I was hoping we could explore on our own. Luckily, I was able to find pictures from people who did the same exact experiments. So let's start off with the water. We were going to see what happens when you don't water a plant for a while. So. What do you think would happen if you had a plant that you watered and one that you just stopped watering? You think it would stop growing? I think that's an excellent prediction. Let's take a look at some pictures and see what we notice. You were right. The plant that did not get any water stopped growing. Not only that, its leaves also fell off, so all that was left was a little bit of stem coming out of the soil. You guys are so smart. How about the other experiment we were going to do about sunlight? What do you think would happen if you planted some seeds, put one of the containers in a dark space, and another one that you kept in light? What would happen to those seeds in the dark? What do you think would happen? Hmm. Maybe they wouldn't grow? That's a good guess. Let's take a look at some photos and see what happened. What did you notice in that photo? I noticed that the plants that were growing in the dark were actually taller than the ones growing in the sunlight. How crazy is that? Well, that happens because those plants that are growing in the dark are trying to reach and grow as tall as they can to find any sunlight. I'm sorry we couldn't do these experiments together, but you can always try that at home if you'd like. And now it's time for a bug hunt. Many of the creatures we find in our garden can fly. So we're gonna start off looking for things that fly in the garden. You ready? Let's go. The first flyer I found was a dragonfly. Look how fast it zooms past me. Whoa, oh, I found it again. Here it goes, zooming past, whoa. I believe we saw a blue dasher dragonfly. These dragonflies love water features and the sun. They're great in the garden because they eat pests like flies and mosquitoes. After our dragonfly zoomed by, I found this little creature under the ivy. It's a morning cloak butterfly. You can tell from its dark color and light rims. Butterflies are great in the garden. They help flowers pollinate, plus they're so pretty to look at. After leaving my butterfly alone for a while, I saw this little friend flying around. This is a European paper wasp. I can get so close because they are non-aggressive and they're great to have in the garden. Their larvae eat pests like aphid flies and caterpillars, and the adult wasps themselves also help with pollination. When they land on different plants, they pick up pollen and are able to spread it to another plant. Our final flyer is probably our most common, a honeybee. This honeybee is digging around in that flower to collect pollen, mostly to bring back to its nest in order to make honey. Do you see those white spots on its legs? Let's zoom in closer. That's actually pollen sitting on that honeybee's legs. Most of it will get back to the hive to make honey, but some of it will be spread around to other flowers and that is how they pollinate. They're super helpful in the garden. Just be careful of their stingers. If we go from looking up to looking down, there's all sorts of bugs we can find crawling around helping out in the garden. Let's take a look and see what we find when we look down on the ground. I found so many kinds of spiders looking around my garden, which is great because spiders eat pests like aphids, caterpillars, and fruit flies. This here is a ground spider. I found them living under a shell in my garden. These are called ground spiders because they live on the ground and don't usually spin a web. They hunt their prey and they're super duper fast. 
Let's see if I can get a better look. Just move that leaf, uh-oh. Move it again. Oh, it's so fast. Then I found this spider. It's an orb weaver. It was hiding on a cabinet in the yard. They tend to make big webs where they can catch lots of flying pests like fruit flies and mosquitoes. Finally, I found this friend hiding on the cover to our barbecue. This is called a bold jumping spider. It's a big spider that hunts its prey and actually jumps on it on the ground, hence the jumping name. I found one last massive spider in my garden, but don't worry, it's not real. It's a leftover decoration from Halloween. Guess it's time to do some cleaning. Another common crawler you find in the garden are ants. Ants can be a huge pest if they get inside your home, but out in the garden, they can actually be quite helpful. Lots of people think ants are bad to have in the garden, and they can be, especially if they make their colony or their nest underneath the ground near a root system for plants. So sometimes they can actually destroy the plants. But overall, ants are actually great in, for the garden. By digging their tunnels underground, they help bring air down into the soil, which is called aerating. They also eat things like caterpillars, which can be a huge pest to your plants. Maybe you notice the ants walking in a line. I'm gonna see if I can try and show you where their colony is or their nest. Don't worry, it's not hurting them. Do you see how they're walking in a line and they kind of keep bumping into each other? That's how ants communicate. They stay in a line and they bump into each other to communicate. Now that we've looked at bugs that crawl on the ground, there's another place to look, underground. I found this log in my garden. We're gonna roll it over and I bet we're gonna find a whole world of bugs under there. Let's take a look. Whoa. Underneath our log, I found all sorts of bugs. This first one is a slug. Does it look familiar to you? Slugs look a lot like snails, but they're missing something. What is it this slug is missing that a snail normally has? You're right, it's a shell. Now slugs are not particularly good for your garden. They eat a lot of plants, but they're slow movers and they are a nice snack for some of the other bugs we're about to find underneath this log. Slugs, like many insects, have a special body part that helps them get around. Do you see it on the top of their head? It almost looks like eyes on stalks, but in fact, they're antenna and they don't have eyes. It allows the slug to feel what's happening in the world around it and make a decision on where to go. The next creature I found under our log is probably your favorite bug to find in the garden. It's a pill bug, also known as a roly poly. Roly polies are excellent to have in the garden. They are decomposers, which means they eat dead things like plant litter and dead bugs. They make soil better by eating this debris and pooping out nutrients. Another fun fact about pill bugs is that they are not bugs at all. They are in fact isopods, which means they're kind of closely related to shrimp. They prefer damp places in the garden because they breathe through gills. Found in the same damp, dark places as a roly-poly is one of the best bugs you could have in the garden. A ground beetle. Let me see if I can show you this one a little better. Ground beetles are great because they eat lots of pests like snails, slugs, and caterpillars. They're also nocturnal, so you don't tend to see them out in the day. Now this one is scurrying off quickly, maybe to find its little babies. Stuck to the bottom of the log, I found these little ground beetle babies. Just like their mother, they will help eat pests out of your garden. And don't worry, I'll put this log back soon so that babies can be reunited with their mother and grow up strong and help keep your garden nice and pest free. The last creature I found underneath the log was an earthworm and I'm so excited that I found one. Earthworms, just like our roly-polies, are decomposers. Again, that means they eat dead things like leaf litter and dead bugs, and as they digest it, they add nutrients to it, and when they poop it back out, it makes the soil better. Let's see if I can show this one a little clearer, but I won't hurt it. <gasps> hey, look what I found! Another roly-poly. 
let's see where that's trying to go. Let me clear it for you. Let me clear it. Oh, there you can see it. Oh, look, this roly-poly did the thing roly-polies are named for. It sensed danger, so it rolled up tight into a ball. If I leave it alone for a minute, it should probably unroll. There it goes, and off again on its merry way. We'll leave that alone and check back in with our earthworm. Earthworms are fantastic creatures for the garden. As I mentioned, they make the soil more nutrient rich by eating debris. They also help aerate the soil. That means as they dig their tunnels underground, they help air get into the soil, which brings in more nutrients. Of all the bugs we saw today, the earthworm might be the best one to have in your garden. While it's not all that pretty because it's kind of a creepy crawler, it is so helpful to all of the plants that you find in your garden. So if you find any earthworms in your garden, leave it be. That way you can keep your garden healthy and happy. How fun was that? And those are just some of the bugs you can find in your own garden. Why don't you take a bug hunt of your own? See what you can find. And as always, when working with live creatures, you wanna be careful. Don't touch anything if you're not sure what it is, and be kind. They're all living creatures who, for the most part, help out in our garden. All right, little scientists, that's it for this time. Until I see you again, stay curious.